With the price of film and somewhat confusing barrier to entry, wasting frames by common mistakes when taking film photos can be not only annoying, but costly. I know when I was first starting out, I consistently was having issues with my exposures and wasn't really sure why, despite making some really boneheaded decisions. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through some mistakes and some bad habits to avoid when first starting out and shooting on film. I've made a couple different styles of these videos in the past as well, so make sure you check out those too if it interests you. First on the list is trying to shoot at an incredibly low aperture or like 1.8 all the time. When I was first learning on my OM-10 and it had a fairly simple, somewhat automated metering system, I would constantly try to shoot at 1.8 for the best bokeh possible. I totally was not even thinking about how aperture directly was influencing my exposure and making every photo incredibly overexposed and just downright unusable. Learning the Sunny 16 rule can become a lifesaver when you're shooting out in the middle of the day in broad daylight. Saving 1.8 for golden hour or moody interior picks is probably your best bet until you are entirely confident with metering and exposuring your camera and scenes. Next up is having an ego because you shoot film. I think many people fall into this trap because from the outside perspective looking in, shooting on film appears to be much more complicated and thus makes the photographer more talented or better in some way. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. The amount of shit photos I took when first learning on film is incredibly high. Film grain does not make any boring image interesting. It has to be innately interesting at first, and the physical and nostalgic properties and aesthetic elements can enhance it, but you can't take an uninteresting scene and make it good by putting it on film. I wish that's how it worked, but sadly, it doesn't. In fact, I think it's easier to get a good photo on digital, whereas on film, you must fully understand your camera, the film stock, and lighting to consistently be getting good images. What I'm trying to say is your, quote, hit rate on digital is probably significantly higher than on film, despite many people thinking film being just better. Third is not developing or scanning or never have done it either for yourself. While I don't do any developing these days myself, the act of completing the process of film is an important one. It closes the loop of the analog process and if nothing else is a creative element that dictates your final image. While developing and scanning, there are creative liberties taken by the lab technician to achieve a final result. Because of this, understanding the process and what makes a good or bad development and scan is vital for your success going forward. Additionally, understanding that it's okay to edit your film as it's being edited in the lab is a notion that many film photographers have a tough time swallowing for whatever reason. Fourth is not creating prints. For me, I was definitely fitting into this criteria for far too long. I was always waiting for my magnum opus shot or something that would feel like museum quality work. Well, after a road trip out west in 2021, I promised myself to create some prints of my favorite shots, even if they didn't feel worthy of said prints. Being able to see the large resolution in a physical form really shows the images in a different light. Yes, you can look at them all day long on a computer screen, but seeing them in full glory on a print or even framed up really makes the photos feel alive and brings a sense of accomplishment to you. It's empowering to see your photos on walls and motivates me to strive to improve and capture more photos with the idea of printing in mind. And last up is not shooting enough because you're afraid of failure or errors or just the cost of film in general. I know with the current price of film especially, it can feel super daunting to make the most out of every role and image. I know the feeling of not wanting to bring your camera or take a walk to shoot because there may not be anything that is super interesting. By being afraid or never bringing your camera along though, I think you're closing many doors to photographs that would otherwise never present themselves to you. By just going through the motions, I think you're much more likely to stumble upon an interesting scene versus obviously never bringing your camera along. No one is saying you have to rip through a whole roll while on your afternoon walk, but at least bringing your camera along may entice you to shoot a couple scenes that ended up looking really interesting, and without the initial push, you never had created or even found those images. I know last summer when I was out east on a road trip in Maine, I was just wandering near Acadia National Park on my final night during golden hour, pretty much just chasing the sun and photographing whatever seemed interesting. I stumbled upon this I don't even know what you'd call it, I guess tiny neighborhood or set of houses along this channel that fed into the ocean where there were tons of fishing trolleys and lobster pots. 
Now, before driving up to the scene, I obviously had no idea about this area or what I would find, but by just continuing to explore, I found some really beautiful compositions. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. Let me know down in the comments below what mistakes or bad habits you guys have that you continue to do on film photography. I know for myself, I could certainly be making more prints, kind of getting the whole full circle process of shooting film and getting that final physical form. I know every time that I make prints, either for myself or for my family for gifts or whatever, I'm always super impressed by the final product and honestly just proud that I was able to capture those photos. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I upload weekly, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, so make sure to stay tuned, stay safe, and stay shooting. Otherwise, until the next video, adios, and peace out, guys. Thank you.